After months of infighting over who will be leader of Zimbabwe's main opposition party, Nelson Chamisa is the elected president of the movement for democratic change. He ran unopposed after some who wanted the top job left the party or dropped out of the race. We have shown the world, we have shown Zimbabwe, we have shown Africa that it is possible to be democratic, it is possible to renew, and it is possible to have a non-violent, peaceful contest uh, internally. And that is what we have shown the world. Look at the number of people who have come all on their own accord. Zimbabweans are watching him closely to see how he plans to put pressure on President Emerson Mnangagwa over rising inflation and unemployment along with fuel and cash shortages. Nelson Chamisa narrowly lost last year's presidential election to President Emerson Mnangagwa. The results showed he has significant support, but whether he can appeal to a broader audience remains unclear. His MDC party also has to show it's different from the ruling ZANU-PF. I think there's a lot of common ground between the ruling party and the opposition ideological frameworks and pro pro propositions. They're both neoliberal, both pro-free market, both pro-business, and therefore they, they don't differ in, 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 in outlook. They may differ in terms of who, who, who are the leaders, what are their ages and so on, but fundamentally, ideologically, they're the same. When it comes to his party, Chamisa has to unite the opposition. It's the first Congress since Morgan Sangerai died from cancer last year. Soon after the death of the MDC's founder, the party split over who should replace him. The next election is due in four years. Chamisa will need everyone to work with him if he's to depose the only party many Zimbabweans have ever known. Harumatasa Al Jazeera, Guero, Zimbabwe.